Okay, this is Bill Hawkins, and this is my vehicle. It's a 07 Toyota FJ Cruiser, also known as FJ Crush. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing today on this is installing a River Raider snorkel, and that's going to go in place of where the antenna is at. So I have to remove the I guess they want me to remove the uh, fender flare. I guess I have to get up underneath it so I can remove the antenna and remove that cowl and uh, drill a three inch hole in place of that and everything. And this is the River Raider snorkel kit. This is the instructions. And here is the, the hose, a three inch diameter heavy duty thick rubber hose. And here is I guess this is the uh, golden piece here that uh, makes everything work. It's all custom made and it goes in place of the antenna. And then here is the the button piece or the air induct piece. They call it a mushroom piece. Uh, it's pretty nice. Uh, I'm going to be removing that decal. I don't like it too much. It's just plain and simple block lettering. So I already put my own on, so I'm going to remove that one. And this is the one I put on myself. The yellow kind of matches the uh, FJ that I have. And a little bit, the font is better. A little bit more style and pizzazz to it, so it gives it a little bit more character. So th this thing will be going in place of this antenna. It's going to be going roughly about there. And what I'm going to be doing... Let me open up the hood. <clears throat> so I'm going to feed it in through here. I guess, I guess I'm going to have to remove the inside uh, fender liner here and remove these parts. So I'm going to get in here and drill this out. And I'm going to pipe it into this. I have a AEM, uh, Brute Cold, cold Air uh, cold air intake system. So all I'm just going to do is cut a three inch hole inside of this box here and then just pipe it in here and just lay it up against this uh, air filter. So that should be enough to suck air through there as well as the air up underneath. And then uh, we'll go from... Okay, the first thing I'm going to be doing is removing the fender flare. That's very simple. Six bolts in here. I mo removed a couple of them already. And then I'll just finish it out. Okay, and that's it. And now we go on to the next uh, thing. Oop. A few rocks from from. Okay, the next thing I am going to do is pull back this liner, and there's some bolts and stuff for the antenna to loosen that up and take that off. I'm just going to remove the top piece of this antenna really quick so I can get this out of the way. All it is is just that. And then on thread. Now, next, I'm going to be loosening up these uh, tension bolts to slide the rod with the cable of the antenna up and out. Okay? And so that'll be my next thing. Okay, I already got the uh, bracket from the antenna off on the bottom part, and I need to get the bracket off in the upper part, and I can't reach it from here. That's why they ask in the instructions to remove this inner uh, panel flare uh, to get to the bracket back there. And this is very easy. You just take off a couple of bolts off the uh, windshield wiper uh, tank, and then move 
this out of the way a little bit. Then you just pop these little push rivets. They're very easy to get off. Just pop them, pop the little head up, and then pull the whole thing out. That's a few of them. Okay, now we get to removing this inner protection thing, which is just like that. Okay, that's it. Now I can get to the antenna mount, which is right there. This is the, uh, if you can see that, this is the bolt or the screw I need to get out. I already re removed it off this bracket. And now I gotta remove that screw right there to remove this bracket off the antenna post. And that way I can slide it out. So fortunately I have one of these little angled screwdrivers, full up some screwdrivers, so I could get to it. Otherwise it would be a pain in the butt. So I'll get to that right now. Just remove the antenna here out of the hole. And now the next thing I gotta do is take the little plastic clips off that hold the cowl in place. I think there's three of them. One in there and two back there. I could probably just break them because they said that uh, you know, they're gonna replace them. They, you need to replace them with uh, stainless steel bolts without the plastic clips. So that. Okay, the next thing you gotta do is uh, remove this uh, little vent piece so you can get to the uh, little clips that hold that plastic uh, piece that goes to the firewall. So just wrap a little piece of paper towel around this. Bit. There you go. Now you can get to these little plastic clips and remove the uh, plastic uh, firewall piece where the uh, intake hose goes through. Okay? Okay, now we're going to remove this uh, plastic piece. I already um, punched a little button on these uh, tabs and removed them. And now I'm going to be pulling this out so we could be making an access for the uh, intake hose coming through there. remove this uh, cowl piece. There's three, I thought there was three, actually there's four plastic clips holding the two on this side, two on that side. So I broke a couple of them because uh, in the instructions they say that uh, they want you to use uh, stainless steel bolts and to put them together because the plastic clips are not strong enough to hold the cowl down with the, uh, with the pressure of the uh, intake hose. So, Get a flashlight. I'll break the rest of them. take this in and drill our three inch hole right here for the intake. And everything looks Okay, I got my cowl piece prepped and ready to cut the three inch uh, hole in. I have a brand new three inch hole cut from uh, Milwaukee and I got it mounted on my drill press. So I'll be doing that right now.
that's all there is to it. Got my hole cut out here for the intake. And what we're going to do is take a little bit of, uh, we'll clean it up first. I'll we'll take some uh, touch up paint and touch up the uh, exposed mat metal so it won't rust on us. And that's it for that. Okay, I finished uh, cleaning up the, uh, the cowl. Uh, I actually had to remove some of the extra, the second uh, piece to the cowl because with this 45 degree angle that fits in there, it goes in just like that. And with the second piece of the cowl in the way, even though the instructions said crimp it down, uh, it was still too much of a gap and there would be no way to get the hose clamp a good enough uh, uh, grip on this piece right here. So I just went ahead and just cut off this piece and then that piece to make enough room around here for the rubber hose and the hose clamp. And that should hold just as well as anything else. And what I'll do is instead of using the uh, rivets I'm going to go ahead and use stainless steel uh, machine screws with uh, washers on the back side and nuts. And I'll do that next. Okay, next step of this process is uh, I just loosely fit the uh, cow piece, the 45 degree flange, on the end of the cow. And I use a level just to make sure. And I get a little sharpie and I make some marks where the rivet holes are going to be going all the way around for where I'm going to drill out. Okay, and that's it. So I'll just remove this and this piece, and then you can see the holes I have right here to be drilled out. And that's what I'm going to be doing next. Okay, I just finished mounting the uh, flange on the cow. And what I did, uh, that comes with a, with a gasket. And what I did just for an added protection, I used the silicone instant gasket around the bottom part of the gasket. Just for extra measure of safety. And I used, instead of the rivets, I used stainless steel screws. They're actually Allen uh, head screws with some stainless steel washers and nuts on the back. And also, just to let you know, uh, that piece I cut off. The second backing to the cow uh, helps a lot because they, uh, they mentioned to you to crimp it. But when you crimped it, I mean you had such a little space in between here and this flange for the uh, for the hose, the intake hose to clamp onto. So when I cut this off, now I got a good amount of meat there to grab with the hose clamp. Otherwise it'd just be like a quarter of an inch. So I did that. So we're done with that. So now the next step I'm going to be doing is the uh, piece that goes above the uh, firewall that, where the hose comes out of. They want you to just to hack this in, in the middle and hack a big piece off of it. Now I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the uh, three inch hole saw and I'm going to be perfectly drilling a hole right there. Right in the middle, not in the middle but towards the end and that should be plenty of room for the hose to go through and to connect onto the uh, inlet box. Uh, and it'll look a lot cleaner because uh, you know when they have it in the instructions they don't they want you to cut this thing right in half and then there's like a big opening gap there and it didn't look too nice so but I'm gonna make it look nice so that